<laughs> right, start her up. Don't screech, don't screech, don't screech, don't screech, don't screech. Oh, f Hello guys, welcome back to Car Obsession and welcome to another episode of Living With a Mazda MX-5. Now as you can probably tell by the title of this video, in this video I'm going to be changing Monique's radiator um, because, well basically to cut a long story short, I broke down a massive bumblebee in the background. Sorry, I got distracted, it's massive, it's on steroids. Anyway, I digress already. So to cut a long story short, um, last week, I was on my way to the, to the MX-5 National Rally and sadly en route um, the alternator belt snapped. So I posted a few you know, pictures online on social media just to you know, outline what had happened and just to basically you know, display my, my tale of woe. Um, and a few eagle-eyed um, MX-5 owners, they, they very, very kindly advised me to change my radiator. Now you may think, hang on, how did they know just from a, from a picture that my radiator needed changing? Well, I will demonstrate. So let me pop the bonnet and I will show you. So as you can see, her radiator at the moment is this horrible brown color. Oh, hand-eye coordination is brilliant once more. So yeah, that is not a healthy color for a radiator. So the plastic on top has turned brown, which means it has become brittle and the radiator could potentially go at any moment. I, I may have um, a few more thousand miles left in it or it might go on my next journey. Who knows? And I've got a lot of traveling to do over the next week or so. Let me jump into frame, hopefully. Nope, you can't see me. Now you can see me, marvelous. Um, so I, from here, um, I now live on the south coast of England. Uh, very sunny, well, it's normally very sunny. Today it's quite murky and gray. So I am traveling to Weatherby, which is all the way up north. Um, that journey is five hours one way, so a 10 hour round trip. I'm then going to Basingstoke, which is a lot closer to home. And then after that, I'm going to Chester, which again is you know, all the way up north. So I'm doing some long journeys in Monique and I don't want to be, I don't want to get to a point where the radiator goes and I'm stranded uh, very far away from home. Uh, that has happened to me once already this week uh, in my Mark II, uh, AKA Mad Max. So I don't really want to relive that because yeah, if you've seen my video where my, uh, my Mark II uh, kind of died on track, yeah, you will know that was not a pleasant experience. Anyway, so here is a brand, oh, there we go. Here is the brand new radiator. So as you can see on the top, the plastic is a nice, healthy, shiny black. This is what a healthy radiator should look like. I've also ordered uh, new hoses because it made sense to get some new hoses. And I've got, an, oh, I've got a new radiator cap, which has just fallen out of its packaging. So before I fit the radiator, um, it makes sense in my eyes to actually do a flush of the system because I'm not too sure when it was last done or if it has ever been done. This car is 21 years old. Um, and you know, it makes sense to do a flush just to make sure that everything is ticking over nicely and make sure the, the system is as clean as possible. But before we do anything, we need to drain the system, drain the old coolant out. Now, just a quick disclaimer. This is not a how-to video or a tutorial. This is more of a vlog. Um, so whatever I say in this video, Please don't take it as gospel. I'm not a professional mechanic. I'm barely an amateur mechanic, to be honest. Um, so yes, but on the flip side, if you do find this video useful, then great. But um, like I say, I'm not a professional, so uh, please do not treat this as uh, a how-to guide. Right, so I've got my jack here. I've actually got, let me bring it up to the camera. Bear with me, it's a bit heavy. So I finally went out and bought a low pro profile jack because both of my MX-5s are lowered. So what I had to do in the past was to get out the crappy scissor jack, jack it up as much as I could so I could fit in my trolley jack 
underneath and that is really a ball ache. So it's nice to have a proper low profile jack. Um, I know for a fact it will fit under Monique. I'm not too sure about Mad Max, but hopefully it should fit under um, him as well. But anyway, gotta get some scissors so I can crack it open. Right, so I've seeked refuge in the garage. Now, annoyingly, it wasn't due to rain until later today. So it seems silly doing this outside when I can use the garage. Um, hopefully, I'll have enough space in here because it is, it's not a massive garage. Uh, it's not really suitable for doing working, but I think really, really and truly, um, because of the rain, I don't think it's gonna let up anytime soon. Um, yeah, I think it's probably a good time to bring Monique in and try to do the work in here. Oh, don't you just love the British weather? Monique may be a small car, but even so, once she was in the garage, there wasn't exactly a lot of room to manoeuvre. Oh, what an absolute kerfuffle. So, the car is now jacked up. Basically, what I had to do in the end, because you can see there's such limited space between the car and the wall, I had to get the jack in at kind of an angle and normally I'd put the axle stands on the sills um, but because I couldn't move the jack out the way what I've actually done and some MX-5 owners would um, would actually you know they would prefer recommending this um, technique let me just take my camera off my little tripod I've actually put it onto the um, chassis rails so it feels nice and secure uh, I've got the trucks at the back which you can't really see but trust me they are there. So yeah, that took quite a lot of time to kind of figure out you know, the most practical way of doing it. And even the most practical way wasn't really overly practical. But anyway, the car is jacked up. So as you can see, I've got no lights in here. So I'm using one of my, uh, um, uh, uh, I was gonna say uh, LED lights, but it's not, it's LCD, not LED. Um, so yeah, so before I do anything, I'm gonna locate the bolts I need to undo. Right, so easy does it. Let's start going back now. There we are, and the coolant is tri trickling out. Right. Gotta be careful. Gotta be careful because it's starting to splash on me. side right so as you can see it's coming out in drips and drabs and it's kind of stopped so what we do now is right so undo the radiator cap and you should see it start to come out there we go start coming out at a faster rate now a top tip I got from Miata Mods, um, I re thoroughly recommend checking out his channel because he is more informative than I am and he's more knowledgeable than I am. Top tip, radiator cap, pop it there so you, you won't forget to put it back on because when you go to close the bonnet it's going to hit the radiator cap but I'm going to put a new um, cap on anyway. As you can see coming out quite nicely. Let's move it over a bit more. Now just a quick thing, it's very important that you dispose of coolant in, because this pan going to be big enough. But yes, as I was saying, uh, or about to say, let me just flip the camera down so you can see everything coming out. So yes, um, as I was going to say, it's very important that you get rid of coolant in um, an appropriate, responsible manner because this is very, very harmful to animals. And you may not be an animal lover, but you know, please, you know, dispose of it in the correct way. Um, you know, take it to your local dump or your recycling centre. Uh, I think you know your local um, auto repair shop may. Um, take old coolant, but you know, please do a bit of research to find out the correct way in which to um, 
to, dis to dispose of your old coolant because it is you know, very important in my opinion and I'm sure many will agree with me. So yeah, so I'm gonna take a breather because the job has been a little bit more fiddly than I originally anticipated and I hate fiddly jobs so I'm gonna kind of get my breath back, get my head together and just let that carry on doing its thing. Oh, I think it's almost empty. We are now going to take the cap off the overflow tank, like so. Just pop that, pop that somewhere to the side. And then what we're going to do is to take the overflow tank off, drain any excess fluid out of it and give it a little bit of a rinse for this you'll want to use boiling water so make sure you've got a kettle to hand if you're British feel, if, you know, if, if you're British like me feel free to make a cup of tea whilst you're at it I'm not going to do that because uh, I haven't really got time to dilly dally so I'm going to try and crack on but yes um, I think these are 10mm bolts but I will confirm in a few moments or I will drop in a subtitle quickly show you hopefully you'll be able to see so you have three bolts for the overflow you have one here which you can't really see because of the light. Another one here, and you have one all the way down there as well. Like I said, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're 10 millimeter, but let me get my ratchet, and I will confirm for you once and for all. Uh, yeah, just poured boiling water in. Obviously, be careful when you do that because obviously this is boiling water. Uh, you don't want to trip to the burns unit, do you? So, so to give it a bit of a shake, I would personally recommend not putting too much water in here because when you're shaking it about, you don't want any to uh, to splash out onto your hands. You know, if you can do this wearing gloves, of course, but I couldn't. I couldn't really be bothered to put gloves on. So, yeah, just going to give it a little bit of a shake. I'm just going to let that rest for a few moments so just so I can get, let the uh, boiling water really soak in. I'm going to hand that to my glamorous assistant who is off camera. There we go, sweetie. Just enough left for a cup of tea. No, no, don't, don't, don't. don't. Well, you'll, you'll put it down because you're passing it to me on a handle that I need to pick up. You silly plum. Well, how was someone meant to hand a kettle to you? Bye. See you later, darling. Yeah, today's actually our wedding anniversary, <laughs> believe it or not. Who said romance is dead? Well, I've put up your computer desk. Yeah, so, so uh, eighth wedding anniversary, I'm fixing my car, and my good wife Patsy has uh, put up a, com uh, a computer desk for me. And your chair. Um, oh, you put my chair up as well? I'm, I'm halfway through it. Oh, you legend. See, there we are. So I'm having a biscuit now. You deserve a biscuit. Um, that's a, that sounded a bit patronising. Um, but don't worry, we are, we are going to go out for a nice meal later once I've cleaned myself up. So don't think that I'm just neglecting my uh, my husband's duties. Once that was done, I removed the under tray to give me better access to the bottom of the radiator. For these, you'll need a 10mm socket. The capacity, in case you're wondering, is 6 litres. I have some deionized water, which I have just here. Now, there would of course be... A discussion about which water to use. Some corners of the internet recommend um, distilled water, some recommend uh, deionized water, and some people will even say, well, if you're you know, where you live, if your water is soft enough, simply use that. Now, someone actually, one of my Instagram followers, uh, messaged me yesterday and said that a um, you know, technician he works with um, recommends not to use deionized water, but like I said, you know, it seems to be a not conflict um, of opinions, um, what's the word I'm looking for? But basically what I'm trying to get at is different people have different way, ways of doing things. I've also got my radiator flush here, which you can't really see because of the lighting. There we go, it's a bit better. So I bought that from Halfords, I think that was about six quid, maybe. It, it was under, under a tenner. So, I've got my deionized 
the ionised water here. Now when you're putting fluid in it's uh, important to squeeze the upper radiator hose to, to get the air bubbles out. For the flush I needed 6 litres of the ionised water and a very precise 162.5 millilitres of the flush. That's half the bottle in case you're wondering. Right, so now it's time to start the engine. Um, let the engine get up to the optimum running temperature. And then once that's done, actually, well, actually whilst it's running, I'm going to put the heater on as well. Uh, and then once it's done, turn the engine off, fill up the... Um, the overflow tank and then got to go out for a quick drive. Now you may find that whilst the engine is running you may need to re-top up the radiator so yes do bear that in mind. And Once that was done, I removed the air intake pipe to give me better access. I then unplugged the connectors that were plugged into the radiator, one of which was very easy, the other one was a bit of a faff if I'm going to be honest. In this clip you may have noticed that all of a sudden it has become sunny. Well, I actually ran out of time on the previous day. Some of you may think, Aaron, it's a radiator job. It shouldn't take you that long. But when you're working in such a tight and cramped space with limited light, it does make things a wee bit trickier. And I was going out for dinner that evening, so I didn't really want to spend too much time on it. So you now join me on the next day. So the old radiator is out, uh, they did need to kind of push it a little bit from the bottom in order to free it, but it is out, which is fantastic. Now what we need to do, well what I need to do, is to trans transfer the fans onto the new radiator, and I also believe I need to transfer across um, these fittings and these clips as well. So yeah, I'm going to crack on and do that, but I do need a toilet break. So as you can see we have the brand new radiator at the back and as I mentioned earlier in the video it's got this nice black plastic on it whereas the old radiator which can be seen here it's got this nasty brown plastic on it so this is the reason why this job is taking place. So what I need to do now, and I probably said it a few moments ago, in fact I'm, I'm almost certain I did, but transfer the fans onto that one and also the uh, fixture and fittings and then the new radiator is ready to be dumped in. Happy days. Once that was done, it was finally time to drop the new radiator in. Oh yes. I'll be honest, I didn't replace all of the hoses purely because this one in particular was just an absolute um, expletive to get out. And the hose itself wasn't badly perished or cracked. So for the sake of making my life a lot easier, I just left it where it was and I didn't replace it.
At this point, I was pretty much done, apart from this very troublesome bolt. I couldn't see what I was doing, so I was having to do it by touch. Every time I thought it was in and it was starting to tighten, it wasn't, it was simply spinning. And yeah, quite a few curse words may have been used at this point. Under tray is back on, and I must admit, it does look a little bit battered towards the back. Uh, thank you, Britain Speed Humps. So she appears to be running fine, maybe running a little bit cooler than she would normally, but I'm talking like maybe a few degrees. Um, the engine does sound a little bit, not misfiry, but you know, I don't know, it just doesn't quite sound as smooth as it should be. But for the time being, I think my work here is done. I'm gonna take her for a quick drive, make sure everything is tickety-boo. Um, she needs a good jet wash as well got a bit of dust inside and quite a lot of dust on the seat so that need to be vacuumed but um, after what seems like an eternity I think it is um, mission accomplished so on that note I'm gonna end this video here um, I hope you have enjoyed it or, or found it useful obviously I know this wasn't a how-to video but if you have got something from this video then I'll that's be, a bonus I'll, exactly exactly right yes a Brucey bonus uh, but yes thank you so much for watching uh, be sure to like subscribe and to ring my bell so you get notified every time I make a video but until the next time guys be sure to keep up the car obsession